Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Clocked In with the Press, hosted at Altman Studios in beautiful downtown Brentwood, California. In this podcast, we highlight news stories, individuals, and organizations that deserve your attention. This is your host, Melissa Van Ruten, Clocking In. Today, we'll be chatting with Amy Tilly, Downtown Brentwood Coalition's new executive director. But before we jump into today's conversation, let's hear a quick word from this episode's sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Sip and Scoop in downtown Brentwood. Sip and Scoop delivers smiles for miles, sip by sip and scoop by scoop. Gelato, Italian ice and signature coffee beverages are just a few of the delicious treats on their menu. Stop by Sip and Scoop at 234 Oak Street in downtown Brentwood to get your fix. They're also on DoorDash. Hi, Amy. It's so good to have you on the show today. Hello, Melissa. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's start like we do and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So my name is Amy Tilly, and I'm a Brentwood resident now, but I have not always lived here in Brentwood. I uh, grew up in San Diego, so did my husband, and we moved moved around quite a bit and um, just with his work and we ended up settling here in Brentwood because we wanted a great place to raise our, our family. And now we've got two two girls, a almost 10-year-old and a, and a three-year-old. And we just love living here. And it's just such a great, great place to be. So thank you for having me and um, looking forward to our conversation. Of course, of course. And and totally agree. Brentwood is, is really great. So tell our listeners who might not know or have heard of it, what is the Downtown Brentwood Coalition or DBC. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're definitely on a mission to get the word out about an organization that's they've existed for 14 years about. So they were formed in 2008. It was just a bunch of small business owners in downtown who got together and said, well, you know, what can we do to make downtown better? What can we do to improve our offerings and just like let the community know what's down here? And so they really started down this path back then. And since then, it has turned into, you know, something much greater. And at this time, there's a full calendar, full year of of big events, small events, promotions, just day-to-day marketing that takes place on behalf of the small businesses of downtown. And so it's, at this point, made up of of members, of small business members, stakeholders. And then as we expand, eventually other affiliate members and even members of the community too. We want them to be involved with the DBC and it's it's our communities downtown too. So we want, that's kind of something for the future. But yeah, right now um, I'm here to support the small business community in downtown and help them grow their business while outreaching with the community and making sure that we're providing the, just the highest level offerings. What We're really filling a need. We're really filling the need of what they want and need because that's how we're all going to be successful. And many... Studies show that a really healthy and vibrant downtown, there's an expanded impact as far as the community at large goes. So if you've got a really good, healthy, fun downtown, chances are the rest of your city is thriving as well. I love that so much. I didn't, that's, that's new information for me and I'm, I'm such an information geek. So I love that. It's really amazing. The community and, and how invested everybody is in building a great community. So I love what DBC has to offer there. So for those of you who may be in Brentwood or the surrounding areas and have been living under a rock and haven't come to downtown Brentwood, it is full of small businesses. I don't believe there's a single, I think the gas station is the only chain business that we have down here. So mm-hmm. every business in the area is is owned by an individual or a family, yeah. you know, small business owners. And and I, I love it. And um, most of them, they live here, right? They live right here in Brentwood. Their kids go to school here. Their spouses work here. They're, you know, they're, they're definitely a big part of the community. It's amazing. It is so amazing. And so to expand on that, you just attended a Main Street America conference, which I know I've been drive like I'll drive through towns and I'll see, oh, we're a yeah, Main Street um, USA or Main mm-hmm. Street America mm-hmm. City or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that that sounds cool. I have no idea what that is. So, <laughs> okay. so tell us. Tell us about the conference. Yeah, and, uh, and You're right. Well, it is really cool. So a large portion of why the city of Brentwood is supporting my role at this new role as the full-time executive director for the DBC 
is because that's one of the many rigorous type of requirements in order for a downtown or a, dist- a downtown district to become an accredited or an affiliate main street. And so what it means is that you're doing a lot of things right. And it means that there's just this whole checklist of things in terms of the way you're engaging the community, the way you're revitalizing your downtown, the way you're transforming a downtown. And it's not, it's a, it's a fluid thing. It's something that keeps going. You know, you have got to, you've got to apply for the, you know, every single year, you've got to meet these requirements. You can't just, you don't just become an accredited or affiliate main street. And then for the rest of time, you are one. So it's just something where you have to grow with the community. Part of the main street now conference that I attended, we talked a lot about that and just what that means to just be including you know, all, all members of our community and rethinking the way that we use space, you know, rethinking what the services are, are we meeting the needs of our community? And so really just looking at it from that, from a much broader standpoint, more strategic standpoint, that, you know, not every business is going to be a great fit for downtown. Um, not every business is going to serve the needs of the community in the same way. And then also, you know, you want to provide a place where families and people want to come and just have a good time. So our, you know, our district is kind of an entertainment services type of district. At the Main Street Conference, I got to hear from Main Streets all across the U.S. about examples of programs and things that they're doing, that they're running, that are really working well for revitalization, and economic development in their area. And so, you know, I just took a lot of notes and bring all that back with me. And I definitely have have a good game plan for our organization to to implement a lot of that down here in Brentwood. So that's I'm, I'm pretty pumped up about it. What are what, so tell me what are some of the benefits that a city or you know in this case obviously downtown Brentwood would have or be offered by being named a Main Street America city mm-hmm. or district? So there are a lot of resources that are available to us as as we are an affiliate designated downtown. So we just received the notification yesterday that we've met those requirements for this year. So we'll be putting that out in the press in the next few days. And, you know, you'll see that designation up on our website and our social media. But part of that is a lot of it's grants and resources. So a part of, you know, what I'll be doing is is applying for and writing writing for grants, basically. And so since we've got a, like a really historical downtown, a lot of historical buildings, kind of like with scholarships, you know, when you're going into college and you're just like applying for all different ones, it's, it's kind of similar, you know. There's just a number of things we can apply for that we wouldn't be able to if we didn't have this designation. We wouldn't qualify for. That's fantastic. So, it's kind of yeah. like a throw it all on the wall and see what sticks. And- well, yeah. So if there's a project or there's a need that that's going on downtown, whether it's pres- you know something to preserve something or some type of beautiful something that the city that we need down here that we're not able to fund um, by by any other means, um, you know it, that money exists out there, and you and just you got to go right? get it. Yeah, a lot of times. So, you know, even American Express, there's a lot of different companies do put these on or they're backing small businesses. They're like small business grants. And so, you know, what I like to do is share those opportunities with the membership too. So as members, you know, when I'm doing the monthly newsletter, I'm listing out like, here's the different grants that you guys would be eligible for. Kind of here's why. There's an awareness part of, of that too that's just important is that a lot of times people just don't know what's out there and available for them. So I'm kind of a hub of information, grabbing all these resources and then putting them back out to them. That's amazing. I love it. I wouldn't be able to keep track of everything. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure I don't, but I, I do my best. You do a great Everyone job. Expect, I do a lot of uh, like a lot of sticky notes. It's bad. Yeah, lists. Mm-hmm. I live and die by lists and calendars. Tell us, you you know, you mentioned downtown Brentwood being historic and that it's a big services and entertainment district. So tell us about what da- what else does downtown Brentwood have to offer that maybe other cities don't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's kind of the more philosophical side of what does Brentwood have. And then, you know, there's the what does Brentwood have. The, the <laughs> solid concrete the real, side. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. brick and mortar, like what brick and mortar. So there's kind of two sides of it. Well, and, give us a little bit about it. You know what? It's sometimes they kind of tie together, yeah. which is interesting. So whenever I do our social media, I love it when someone says, like I did a post a few weeks ago for Boards and More, which is our local skate shop. Well... 
I had, you know, responses like, I've lived here for 10 years and I had no idea that they did bathing suits or that they did this or they did, they had flip flops and they had this. So that's what I love. I love that there's people who've lived here for so long and like, they're just going, oh, like that light bulb's clicking on. Like those services exist for me here. I can shop locally. I can put money into my local economy. I don't need to go on Amazon right now because I can just go downtown and I can get it. And so that's kind of the need we need. A lot of it exists. It's just a matter of putting it out there so people know it's there. That's kind of an intimate thing, you know, getting in there, getting to know the business owners, doing a good amount of photo, video, and then just pushing that out there through our social media. So if you follow at Downtown Brentwood on Instagram, Facebook, just highlighting businesses on there and and offerings. Really, the whole thing is I want the community to follow us, to constantly be looking at like, what's happening down here, whether it's events or concerts or sales, promotions. There's always something going on. There's a ton of live music. A lot of people don't know that either. There's a ton. Coco's has live music every single Friday and Saturday. Harry's has live music. La Fuente does live music. There's usually someone doing music, some beautiful, gentle music at Caps during dinner service. Even more than that, there's a lot going on. But there's also a ton for families. So... Okay, I'm going to miss some. I'm definitely going to miss some. But, you know, in our downtown, it's very cool because our library is down here. And that's really neat in and of itself. Yes. And so that's an experience. And just even the city park is super fun and the water feature. So there's a lot of, like, infrastructure that already exists there. And these other kind of businesses complement it. So the family room is a new addition. And they do enrichment programs, after-school programs, like tween nights. They're, they're definitely doing some things that not everybody else is doing, which is very cool. The Doe House just opened, which is right kind of next to Zephyr across from Chelsea. And it's very cool. It's like a -a Build-A-Bear type of thing, but with Play-Doh. So you think your kids can go in and pick out like their color and their all the stuff they want to... Like it's really, really innovative. I haven't told my youngest yet. He is obsessed with Play-Doh. Oh, it's the best. And it smells good. They're scented. Yay. It's I really hate that, nice. that nasty Play-Doh it, scent. <laughs> it's okay if they eat it. I, wait, Yay. I shouldn't say that. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. But you. But I don't I don't think it's bad. <laughs> non-toxic. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I think it's non-toxic. So there's that. The Galaxy Kids Code Club is down there. It, they've got like a Lego wall in there. And they're, they got a 3D printer. And kids are learning how to code. And like just doing really fun things in there. I mean, that's just like a couple of things that, that are happening down here just well, for families that a lot of people I would say like probably don't know. And that in and of itself is super because you're setting the example for your kids by bringing them downtown to these local businesses and you're starting to instill the love of a thriving downtown in them at a young age. That's a really interesting point. And, I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, and they'll, they're will they able to grow and take that forward. You know, it, it sticks with them. Yeah, that's neat. You know, I guess it's true. I mean, even my own kids, even my little one this morning was like, am I going to go downtown today? And it's like, yeah. I love that you're three and you want to go downtown. My, my kids beg, they'll come, we'll come neat. another business business that people might not they realize exists down scoop. here. Right. <laughs> they do. <laughs> sip and scoop for days. But also, uh, my two oldest kids take piano lessons at Getty's oh, Music. Yes, my mine's going to start doing violin over there. They they offer all sorts of, mm-hmm. of lessons right here downtown. It's right there. And then we have, so Elijah, my middle, he's got an evening class. And we go from there and our restaurants are top notch down here. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Chelsea already. We they begged to go to Sticky Chicken and Ribs, oh, which so has been a long time Brentland established yeah. restaurant. Mac and cheese balls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could I could stay down here and eat for days. Zephyrs is amazing. I know you mentioned them. Well, Guadalajara's just moved in. I have not tried Guadalajara really Guadalajara nummy. yet. I, really I want good. to. Rubianos is I, That's where we go for like our family. I know. Family. I see your photos we, from oh, you do? Okay, all the yeah. time. So we love it in there because they will give Ivy. They don't mind giving her her own personal bowl oh. of um, Parmesan cheese because she just eats it. Sweeney's, MJ's, always packed. Yeah. You it's know, it's true. hard. We, we want to come down here and then going further out, we have Dino's, we have Boondoggies, we I have Wanna Waffle, yep. mm-hmm. we have Roadies, which if you're looking for chicken parm sandwich, Really? Holy oh, see, I haven't tried cow. that. And then, of course, there's Joey at 
Brentwood Craft Beer and Cider. Who, yeah. if you're looking for a grilled chicken Caesar salad. Oh, see, these are new different so things. So good. I mean, I eat a lot of lunch down here. See, because I'm a San Diego, so I love tacos. So yeah. <laughs> three, I love the 311. It's called the 311 tacos. And they're actually shrimp. Ooh. And they're so scrumptious. I'm not a shrimp they are, fan. Like, they that are plentiful, good, too. I mean, they're not sad tacos. They are, like, plentiful. They're well, really, really good. And speaking of tacos, La Costa. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And not just tacos, their quesadillas are killer. <laughs> I feel like a, case, a good quesadilla says a lot about a place. Yes, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. sure. Yep, it's true. Well, and La Fuente too. I mean, I guess, you know, see, that's kind of nice for me is that, you know, we have a lot of Mexican food down we here. We do. Which is quite nice for me. We do. Um, but but they're all different, which is interesting. It is really good. Like, I, I like to go to them for different things. For sure. At La Fuente. And then my another favorite or two two more favorites. Oh my gosh! Every time I, know, I stop Jalisco's and think, there's some right else. there, right right out, like just right down the Jalisco's street. Jalisco's has pupusas, which yeah, are killer. They're really good. And El Gallito, mm-hmm. which I feel like a lot of people miss because they're they're you know more they around come the corner in from a different on Brentwood side of Boulevard, town, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So freaking good. Their burritos. Oh my word! Oh my word! Okay, I okay. Sorry, no, we're just <laughs> so there we go. Food. We've we've, we've I, covered I hope food. We've shouted out all the food mm-hmm. um, because it is. It's amazing. I could go on and on and on. I love food. Before we move on and talk about some of the other things that that downtown Brentwood offers and what our vision is for the future, let's hear another quick word from this episode sponsor. Today's episode of Clocked In with the Press is brought to you by our friends at Sip and Scoop in downtown Brentwood. Sip and Scoop started out as a food truck, serving coffee, hot cocoa, and desserts on the go, but the demand was so high that they had to open a shop at 234 Oak Street. Here at Clocked In, we love Sip and Scoop. They're just a few doors down from our offices, and we're there often enough that they know our names and orders. It's like cheers, but better, because there's dessert. Try their cold brew coffee, or choose a latte or Americano for a classic coffee drink that can't be beat. And we haven't even talked about their breakfast sandwiches and avocado toast. Have I mentioned the root beer flows and the iced lemonades? Those are my personal favorites. <sighs> okay, obviously I could talk about food all day, but here's the point. You gotta go to Sip and Scoop. Visit them at 234 Oak Street in downtown Brentwood, or have Sip and Scoop brought to you wherever you are by DoorDash. Having an event? Let Sip and Scoop cater it. Give them a call at 925-684-7710 to find out more. We've touched on a bunch of great businesses down here. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have a lot of great events that go on, which we'll get more into. I'd love to hear what your vision is for expanding on that and incentivizing new small businesses to, to come and open downtown and also attracting people to come to our wonderful downtown and see what there is to offer. Mm -hmm. A good groundwork's been been laid in downtown in terms of filling vacancies, getting high, high high-quality businesses in there. Because, you know, a small business, they they need to have a good game plan before they come in, before they do anything. So before this, um, I'm an accredited business, small business consultant. So that's what I was doing before I took the job. So certainly, you know, I'm doing a lot of analysis in terms of, you know, what makes sense down here? What will do well? Like, we wouldn't want to set anybody up to not be successful here. So it has to be the right fit for downtown and the right fit for the small business owner for them to make that move. Right now, downtown is full. You don't see a bunch of open windows or vacancies. It's just, it's really bustling. And there's a big desire to be downtown. It's the place businesses want to be. You know, we have the restaurants, we've got the bars, but then we also have all these fun family things happening during the day. And then we've got events that kind of fill that in. So when we look at downtown strategically, like on Monday through Sunday, what does that look like? What what type of potential is there for a business to have foot traffic? And it's high. You know, there's a good amount of people flowing through downtown to to go into these businesses. And so I think like that a new business that just opened a Salt and Fig Marketplace. Have you been in there? I love Salt and Fig. When I heard about that concept, I really thought that was brilliant. Just because it's it's something different. It fills a need. Like if you're going to be entertaining or you're doing something, you're like, oh, I do need, I could do need this, this, and this. This really would take me up a notch or they've got like baking packs or, I mean, there's so much really cool stuff in there and it's so unique. Craft cocktail mixes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of bougie charcuterie the scone supplies. Mix. The scone. Oh yeah, mix I can't. Really, wait. Really, okay, so this is something so unique, you know, that you can't, you know, you you can't just run down to the big box store and go buy this, but you know, it's it can be part of an experience. So, 
I and kitchen gadgets too. I'm yeah. such a sucker, but also, too. so my husband is the baker in our family. Oh, okay. I don't, I can throw flavors together and cook just fine, but if I have to follow a recipe, forget about it. Mm-hmm. I don't have the attention span for that. <laughs> so I actually just bought him a gift certificate at Salt and Fig oh, for his smart. birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know what? I could, that totally makes sense. And see, my husband goes in there every single week to get those jalapeno stuffed olives. And like, if they're, if they're, if he buys them all, they, they'll reorder, they got to reorder them. <laughs> He's just buying them all off the shelf. So I was just like, that so was if you really, can't really find, smart. So if you can't find jalapeno stuffed olives, blame <laughs> Amy's husband. Totally. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I love seeing new businesses come in like that, that do something to, you know, a little bit different. What I look at the downtown, I I really look at it as like this ecosystem. It's really delicate. It's very delicate, just like the rainforest. <laughs> I think you, you know, one thing missing and it just doesn't work the same, you know. So, you know, it's not enough just to have all bars and restaurants. You've got to have these great retailers, you know. We have high quality retailers in We downtown. have amazing shops You downtown. know, like it's very on trend. There's a lot, you know, this is stuff that, and then you can actually try it on versus trying to order it online and then. You also are getting this customer service experience that you just simply will not get anywhere, anywhere else. else. Anywhere else. I mean, these are smaller shops. They keep they keep a, a good amount of just the right amount of inventory because they're smart business owners or small business owners. They understand like what good product levels are and things like that. And just keep things that will actually sell and push out so that they can keep replenishing and just be moving in new products. So you just, you see a lot of turnover in those shops. So, you know, if you go into Drenched or you go into Socialite or you go into Olive Place. And they're so, even though they're all kind of the same model, they're a small boutique, Mm -hmm. they're all different They are different, yeah. That, you know, it caters to to younger. Mm -hmm. It caters caters to middle age and and it caters to older like you 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 would be hard pressed to come downtown say you're planning a date night or Mm -hmm. you have an award ceremony to go to oh yeah you'll find it yeah you you would be hard pressed not to find (laughs) it i have to walk around and go i have to leave now i can't be here i need to go (laughs) i can't uh, this isn't what i should be doing right i need to go because there's too much good stuff (laughs) and i certainly and i can't make a decision so but there's just yeah we need a good men's boutique down here you know um that's true i want to say all of place started just just started carrying some men's in there with with a couple of different brands see now it gives me another reason (laughs) just double check on that but i i think you're right you know i think you're right and actually yeah i think I want to say socialite might even have a few things. I think you're right. Now. I think you're right. I think, but you're right. I think that's see, that's so smart. That's the kind of thing we have to look at is what is the need? What are what are we missing? Boards and more definitely has like shirts, has you know, board shorts and has like stuff like that, you know, even has some nicer stuff. But maybe that's important for me, right? Is let's bring awareness to that, which might be something that people don't know exists. So and I, we I also have it. great antique. Oh yeah, and we vintage do. stores. We do. Which is so we really have the fun. Pink Door and a Vintage Wonderland, and um, Vintage Wonderland just moved, so they're in a new location, just a few doors down. So if you guys haven't checked, their hours are a little bit different now, and they've moved down right next to Brentwood's Cocoa County Wine Company. I love all like the retro, all the furniture in there right now. There's a lot of really cool furniture in there at the moment. And Pink Door is across from, if you, you know, you don't know where it is. It's across from City Park right there, kind of faces City Park next to Dino's and Rody's. The Crystal Bowl, which is another another location, is just another new business. That's I know. Everybody town. kind of did this this shuffle we downtown. Have, they <laughs> did. And so Crystal Bowl's got a, got a, another location, the main location, uh, Liberty, Liberty Link Shopping Center with the Salt Cave and then now Crystal Bowl Gift Shop, the downtown location. We've just seen... I just, even just since I've started, we've had so many new businesses. Like we made this map, there's this map that was made of all the downtown businesses. It was produced last year, but even at this point, there's so many new businesses on it. So looking forward to doing the new map. Perfect. (laughs) Awesome. Tell us about some of the events. Okay. So we just, um, so we work, we're a nonprofit organization. I'll say that. So we we're a nonprofit. We work on a fiscal calendar, fiscal year, which is July 1st through June 30th. So kind of run our event schedule with that in mind with our volunteers and things like that. So we just had the second annual Bags, Bites, and Brews Cornhole Tournament, which was something that we launched last year, kind of in response to Oktoberfest having to be tabled due to COVID. And so Cornhole was a good answer to that because it was an outdoor event and their social distancing, right? Because you're like spread apart. It was surprisingly very popular. So we said, you know, that was really popular. Let's probably try that again, you know, in the kind of the more core time of the year. And so 
kind of rolled the dice a little bit and doubled the amount of teams that we had had last year. And and we filled up and sold out and still had people showing up wanting to play. We had a huge amount of people come visit the Kids Zone. We had some great sponsors like East County Performing Arts Center sponsored the Kids Zone. And we had like face painter down there and doing balloons and bubbles and hula hoops. And it was really cool. And we just had a ton of people. I mean, we were guesting we had about somewhere between 800 and 1,000 people down there. That's amazing. So when you, we'll just go back to when you asked about what another, what also brings businesses to downtown. It's things like that. It's these events that we're doing and the promotions and the marketing that we're doing to support them to, that, that they don't have to do on their own, right? Because downtown Brentwood Coalition, that's all, you know, that's our marketing spend. That's money they're not having to put out there because we're doing the boosted ads and we're doing the advertising in the newspapers. And so it's like by extension, a lot of them are getting that marketing, you know, it, it really. For sure. It, it re- builds organic yeah. patronship. Mm-hmm. of their businesses you yeah. know and they don't they just have to show up and unlock their door that's it and sometimes it's not you know it's not that the person went in and got a haircut that day at rake salon or the hair encounter or, you know or the beauty lounge it's that they were down there at the car show and went oh i could go get a facial down here i could get my nails done down here. i could get it my hair done down here or you know what i mean so it's kind of more of that like that turnaround business it's the people come back they kind of make a mental note or take a picture or start looking it up on their phone right then and there during an event and then come back later. So for sure. that's a really cool reason for that we like that we like the event. So okay, so we just did the bags, bites, and brews. We did kind of our wedding showcase back in at the earlier part of the year, which was typically called Brides Day Out. We ch- we try to change that up a little bit. Just with COVID, there were some some new things we wanted to try to do it outdoors, and it was really beautiful. And that kind of helps boost some of our wedding industry related businesses downtown, which we a, have a ton. Also, I do. know we talked There's about a ton everything of else. Photographers, photographers, a ton of services, salons, florists. Yes, we have two. We have ribbons and roses and Brentwood florist. And and Sam and Sid Loft also do florals, and just even Spinola Farm and Co. does florals. So, you know, there's just we have a lot, and we have a few photographers. We've got wedding cleaners. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. We've got some. Honestly, we have seriously talented people down here. We it's, really, really do. We, we're really talented. Like, even just where we're at right now, which is a wonderful. We're having a great time during this podcast. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, that so we did that. That was that's kind of a smaller scale one. It's, um, you know, kind it's of more specific. specialized. It's, yeah, it, yeah spe- specialized. That's the word. So bags, bites, and bruises was pretty big, and then we're moving quickly into our cruise and blues car show, which is August Saturday, August sixth. Bill Brandt Ford's been serving the community for 50 years, and they're they're a downtown business, right? They're right here. They're right next to Liberty. They're right here by the high school. So they're celebrating 50 years in business, and they're going to be helping us present that the car show this year so we can kind of expand it a bit. That'll be 2 to 7, and we expect three or five, three to 5,000 people to come up. Wow. For it. It'll be busy. It'll wow. be busy. It'll be a big one. So we have a ton of cars in the streets of downtown. It'll be There'll be a live, like, blues, like a music concert happening out there. So, you know big kid zone so we've got that going so and then also we have concerts in the park we have movies in Mm -hmm. the park we have the saturday farmers market and then once a month we have the makers market which is another it's crazy when you really start listing them off you know what they are and when i do the calendar for the month it's like yes you're right we've got the pacific coast farmers markets down here every single saturday year round now because you know, that's what people wanted and that, and they love it. And that's fantastic. And it's and, always busy. Yeah. And they only sell what they grow. You That's kind of a requirement. You have to have grown it. And then every third Saturday, you know, the Makers Boulevard is here. And this particular Saturday, they're celebrating their one year anniversary of being downtown. So they are going big. There's this humongous raffle prize going on and all the proceeds are going to be going to an organization that they're as close and near and dear to their heart. So Mickey and Minnie are going to be down here. Yeah, it's going to be know, it'll, They're going to go big. They're definitely going to go big. It's going to be a really fun Saturday and we hope that people will come down. Go to and the weather's going to be... Uh, it is amazing. Nice. Yeah. It's not going to be too hot. It's not going to be yeah, too cold. Get your produce. Which I mean, again, living in Brentwood, I feel like mm-hmm. we do. We get the the few weeks a year that it's just like it's, it's kind of too bad. hot. You don't wanna, yeah, you don't <laughs> wanna, yeah. That's when you hit the farmers market early. That's when we see the crowds are quite early. But yeah, that'll be a fun day. You know, we just hope everyone will stay down here and you know check out some of the shops, go have some lunch or dinner. You know, just enjoy the day. Yeah. And then, but tonight, oh, tonight's Friday. Yeah, is there? There's there's a concert in the park. There it's is nineties jams. It's the and it's the first one of the season. It is the first one of the season. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Which so is, you bring your chairs, you bring your, you just set up your own stuff and you come out, you can go, you know, I recommend, this is what I do, you either go to Boondoggies, go to Rubiano's, get a pizza, get, you know, get go to Dino's, get your sandwiches, get your blanket, just get a good setup and just, yeah, I love 90s it. jams. I know, I'm, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm, I'm almost bummed that I'm missing tonight. I, I actually have a date. We're going to the city to see a show and I'm very excited, but I love, it's, I forget the 90s. It's Club 90. Club 90. Thank you. Is that the name of the band, though? It is. Okay. See, I guess I thought they were kind of doing like an overarching, but okay. So Club 90. Okay. So yeah, I just uh, asked people kind of what their favorite 90s jams were because it's kind of hard to, it's hard to pin that one down. Yeah. I don't know. I'm an 80s person myself, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're, they were good music. They were good for both, but yeah, same. <laughs> so it's the first one. And it's Club 90s, which mm-hmm. I've heard they're a lot of fun. I think they've played at some other areas mm-hmm. locally. So definitely come out to that. Quickly tell us maybe what is one of your favorite things about downtown Broadwood? Hmm. That is a great question because I love a lot of things. I I love things that, that people wouldn't even think about. Like just even when I was down here on Sunday morning at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, getting ready to set up for the cornhole tournament and the streets were just totally empty and it was super quiet and the sun is coming up. I mean, it was just spectacular. I mean, like this historic downtown, the press building is just like looking magnificent. It's like a rainbow in the sky. I mean, I'm just looking around and like, are you serious? Like, I can't believe this place. It's so beautiful. It's so peaceful. It's so friendly. I love that, you know, like this week when my car broke down, like a bunch of people walking around the streets were trying to help me. Or Jose from the barbershop is jumping my car. I love that. I don't, that's not everywhere. You don't get that everywhere. You don't get that friendliness, that care, consideration. And I just think it's just really, really special from that aspect. I don't have to go far to enjoy my life, you know, and and with our family to enjoy our life. I can come down here for date night. And, and have like an adult, adult grown up good time. And, but then I can come down here with kids. But then I also, there's actual like real life services that I need and use. You know, there's real estate offices down here. Erickson Real Estate's down here. Um, Delta Ranches and Homes is down here. It's Corcoran Global. So, you know, there's like, there's a lot of services that you don't even know are like packed into here that you can, that you can use. You know, there's insurance companies. For so sure. it's kind of like you can really do your life here. I mean, I have... My my vehicle has like thirty thousand miles on it, and it's a two thousand sixteen. So that just tells you like how far I drive. <laughs> I don't, don't have, have to, to go far. <laughs> no, it's like yay, gas prices. Yeah, <laughs> so I just think that's something that's so nice is that I really feel like it. It's very like well rounded in terms of what exists here, and I just I enjoy it when it's quiet and peaceful, and I'm alone in downtown, and I enjoy it when it's busy, and I and I feel so happy. When it's nighttime and those little sparkle twinkle lights are on all the trees going downtown and you just see these people laughing and you're, they're having a good time and you're just like, this is it. I will often be driving home from photographing a wedding or something and have to come through. I live, I, I'm walkable distance mm-hmm. to downtown, which is one of my And I was, yeah, yeah. I, I was <laughs> until recently. Mm-hmm. But I love driving through after the bars have closed and it's just kind of quiet, but those lights are still going and it is so... It's like magical. It is. It, there's something really special about it. I don't know. I, I know it's it feels like cheesy, it's out of a storybook. I know, but it does. It, it is. I'm like, like oh, this is my downtown, and I'm super proud of it, mm-hmm. and what everybody has to offer. And I'm really happy that I can, that I can shop. I can get those services that you you talked about. I can eat and work. Right. We right. Both work and, well, you're right. And working downtown yeah. is amazing because I'm able to better patronize these businesses because I'm right here, and I know if I need something, it's right here. Which is is excellent. Yeah, it's just providing jobs for those in our community and providing services that we all need. So win win, you know. My favorite part is the roses in City Park. Oh, they are very cool. They There's are, a whole like rainbow of roses. They've got amazing. all the colors. Yes, mm-hmm. and they smell fantastic too. The when they the light hits them and and the sun, they've been you know kind of yeah, those little small things that you know and start to appreciate. You know, yes. Mm-hmm. And the library, my kids love the library. It's fantastic. We've we've talked a lot about. What Downtown Brentwood Coalition offers the community in the ways of businesses and events and services. So if if somebody is out there listening and they're like, wait, I am downtown, I have a small business, or I am in that radius, what is the criteria for becoming a Downtown Brentwood Coalition member? And then what are the benefits that 
I mean, obviously, aside from what you've already kind of listed is the marketing, you know, but what are some of the other benefits that people find from being a, a member? Mm -hmm. So this is a perfect time. See, we didn't even know what this was happening when we scheduled this talk, but um, <laughs> Downtown Brentwood Coalition is getting ready to roll into our, our new membership year. And we have put out just in the last couple of days the new membership offerings, which are definitely quite a bit different than what's been offered in the past. And the goal is to be able to support many more small businesses. So the downtown streets, Oak, First, Chestnut, Second, you know, these are these these businesses have have really over the years seen a great benefit of being downtown Brentwood Coalition members. And what we're trying to do is is and will, you know, are are actually doing right now is supporting businesses that are even a little bit further out of that footprint and just kind of maybe right on the cusp, right on the edge. You've got Pine Street Country Club down here. Connect Yoga just opened. Golf Ballins right there. You know, there's so many businesses by like Brentwood Fine Meats and East County Performing Arts, you know, that are um, They're the here, but they're maybe a little just like slightly further. outside. And yeah. so, but they are part of our downtown. They're part of this corridor. They're part of, they're an important part of like the economic vitality in this city and, um, you know, a lot of them are even down Brentwood Boulevard, that corridor that comes in. Those are businesses that need some additional support. And so as far as membership goes, what we've plotted out, and that's it's on our website. If you go to – you can either go to Brentwood Downtown or Downtown Brentwood. Either of those will actually get you there. Dot com. Yeah, dot com. And if you look under membership, or even right now on the website, you can look and view our membership offerings right now and kind of all that that entails. And you can even sign up if you want to do that. But as far as for downtown business membership, there's that's there's three kind of levels. One is these members that exist right here, and those members really get uh, they get a lot of support. And um, I work with them one on one in terms of helping put together strategy for them. So I'm kind of at their at their disposal. You know, um, you know, I've got a, an office here in downtown, and I'm I'm meeting like day every day. I'm meeting with several different. You're places, always somewhere. I'm I love always it. gone. I, <laughs> that's the thing. My office is a great place to like charge my laptop. But basically, <laughs> like I'm on, the, I'm moving. I'm in the businesses because with small business owners, they don't they can't just like lock their doors and come to you. Like in right. the corporate world where it's like, oh, let's go have lunch. Like, right. No, like you've got to talk Step to into them my office. <laughs> in between customers. You have to, as a business consultant, you've got to be flexible with their business. And, you know, their time is super duper valuable. And so you can't be having them, you know, just drop everything to come meet about strategy. If they had time to do that, they'd already be doing it. Right. That's one thing about small, small business owners is they're, they work so hard. And so um, I'm here to support them and help them put together strategy for their marketing, for their just finding new revenue streams, things like that. So there's really kind of a more holistic approach that we take with those businesses. And then the second kind of level is what we're, what's called an affiliate down, an affiliate member. And so these are businesses that are like probably within a quick bike ride, right? Or stone's throw, you know, you could you, – you could walk to them, but it would be be like a little tired afterwards. Sure. <laughs> but, they, but they'd be, but they'd be, you know, pretty nearby. And so those are businesses that yes, we want to support with our social media, through our events, through listings on and our directories and our maps and things like that. And I definitely will still meet with them and help them strategize, just maybe quarterly or maybe yearly, something that's a little, you know. They, they can't just walk into my office because they're a little bit further away, you know. Right. So it's just it's it's just a little bit harder, but we want to make sure that we're supporting them. And so, you know, their membership fee and everything reflects that. It reflects that, yes, we can definitely support you, include you in events, do discounts on booths when we have events and things like that. But just that, like, on a daily basis, we, you you probably won't see us, so won't see me. Sure. Right? But um, I'm a phone call away, and, and we have tons of resources. So they still would be eligible for the resources and the grants and things that we're you know, working towards and our newsletter and keeping everybody informed, like if there's going to be water shut off or there's, you know, we've got events, I like to send them the footprints and tell them how the traffic flow is going to be. And it's just really like an information source as well, which helps them understand how to staff their businesses, how to communicate with their customers if they're going to need to have a different parking plan or their hours. So, you know, there's there's definitely a huge benefit. It's a giant be benefit to join the join the 
coalition because you also have this great network. When we get together and meet up, I love seeing like the cross promotions that occur. Like, oh, well, my business does this and well, mine does this. Well, hey, you know, we need to collaborate. So part of what I'm doing is connecting the dots of these businesses to help them cross promote and just connect what they're doing. And people don't realize what a huge benefit that is in and of itself. I think really there's, there's so much that DBC has to offer Definitely check out downtownbrentwood.com or brentwooddowntown.com. I love that they both point to the same same place. So well, it doesn't matter I, what people yeah, put it's in funny. there. <laughs> I think someone was like squatting on the URL for a while. And we just I was just able to buy that like a um, a month or two perfect. ago. So that, no, that's perfect. <laughs> so get everybody there. But the last level that was new is our nonprofit partner because I love working with nonprofits. A lot of my background was in nonprofits, and I love that they do a lot of work and they have a huge volunteer army. And they come in and they do a lot for our events and for our community. And they do so many special things that we just can't we don't have the bandwidth for, you know, but they, they do all that. And so we wanted to create this membership that was specifically for nonprofit partners. So it kind of gives us a license to be able to help promote them and what they're doing and give awareness to what their, their efforts are, because, you know, they definitely deserve to, to be known like for what they're, what they're doing. There's a lot of really cool local nonprofits and and like one of them working wonders there. They work with a lot of the downtown businesses have said, yes, we want to be part of like the work, job skills training program. So yes, we want to be able to do that. So right now we're kind of working on coordinating that where they can have folks from Working Wonders come in and do some job skills training there in within the businesses and learn like actual, you know, great skills that they can use in life. That so, is so cool. I, I think, think really and special. I think I've seen them. Yeah. Downtown. At Dino's, I think for sure they've been there yeah. and, and a lot and I think at least eight or nine other businesses said that they want to be involved now. Well, and it's a fantastic way to bring attention to nonprofits that already exist that mm-hmm. maybe, again, people don't realize. Yeah. That and 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 possibly even nonprofit nonprofits that people could themselves benefit from. That's true. Yeah. You're you absolutely just never right know. about that. Yeah. You're definitely right. And looking in the future. We're putting together like friends of downtown. So I want to be able to have, should be hopefully rolling that out in the near future here would be like a pass for families that they can come and have like discounts on different things downtown, like on kids eat free on Tuesdays or something that they could use throughout the whole week. And so that's kind of a, we'll call it a membership, but kind of because we want the community to buy and we want them to be uh, excited and involved and aware of all the stuff we're doing. So right now, if you go to our website, it'll, this annoying pop-up screen will say, hey, do you want to sign up for our email? It's called What's Up in Downtown. So if you sign up for that, once that program rolls out, you'll get the, you'll be the first to know. You'll get the email on that. Very cool. Very cool. So website, mm-hmm. social media, mm-hmm. downtown Brentwood, mm-hmm. follow them there. Thank you. Stay up to date on all of the latest. I am so excited. And of course, like I feel like the, the piece de resistance downtown, it will be the reopening of yes. our Delta Theater. I, I cannot wait. It's everything. We're, I'm just, yeah, I me too. Because I loved it before and I know we're going to love it after too. Of course, of course. So we're, we're excited for that. Thank you so, so much. This has been, I... Thank you for having me. I'm like fun. bursting with happiness about our downtown. <laughs> it's so uplifting and the way that the way that businesses down here and the small business owners are encouraged to work together. What is the quote? Right, a rising tide lifts all boats. I love that. That's like one of my favorites. I love that, that and it mm-hmm. it embodies downtown Brentwood mm-hmm. in a way. You know, I might I joke all the time. I'm like I have a lot of opinions and I might think a lot of things, but Brentwood really embodies that. Mm-hmm. And and it's something that I really love and respect about this area and and especially downtown. Mm-hmm. Well, I think as we kind of expand to be able to support, you know, businesses further out, those affiliate members, you know, hopefully that that whole philosophy, everything you're explaining will just continue, you know. We're, It'll start. We're excited to just can expand that, just that feeling, you know, that of being a part of something and um, support the businesses and the community further further out. So hopefully we we see some some more members join the coalition and we can offer that support to them that maybe they've just never had before i, I think mean they don't have to hire a small business business consultant right now right because they've got they've got some support coming from this sure. direction which is funded by the city of brentwood well that is it for today's episode of clocked in with the press we really appreciate you taking the time to listen in and be sure to check out next week's episode when we'll be chatting with chef greg reynoso about how cooking has changed his life And as always, be sure to tune in every Friday for our weekly news and sports updates. 
If you would like to read more news stories of East Contra Costa County, you can do so through our website at www.thepress.net or through our Twitter and Instagram at Press Clocked In or simply The Press Net. If you have any thoughts on this episode or any others before it, you can email them to podcasts at brentwoodpress.com. That's all I have for you today, but I look forward to next time. This is Melissa Van Ruten clocking out. Thanks again to this week's sponsor, Sip and Scoop. Remember that feeling of hearing the ice cream truck coming down the street as a kid? Bring back that feeling by visiting Sip and Scoop. They started out as a truck too, and now they have a brick and mortar shop right here in Brentwood, so you don't have to chase them down the block. Sip and Scoop has all kinds of high quality desserts to satisfy any sweet tooth. Gelato, root beer floats, and iced coffees are just a few of my favorites. And the whole menu is available to go on DoorDash. Stop by their shop in downtown Brentwood and get your scoop on.